Today I'm doing a quick overview of uh, basic Kubernetes components. So um, in this video, I'm going to create a series of short videos so that uh, you know people don't get bored with really long demos. Um, but I'm going to show basically the pod management uh, resources in Kubernetes, namely pods themselves, replica sets, and uh, deployments, and how each of those plays a role in uh, managing the uh, the application and lifecycle uh, of your containers. So um, I've got these pre-scripted, but they're running on a uh, live cluster. So the live cluster I'm going to show here graphically. Uh, this is Cockpit running on Fedora, and here are my two uh, Kubernetes nodes. And we'll see uh, as the demo progresses that this will update in real time to show you what the you know visually what the state of the cluster is. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create a basic pod. Uh, this pod is a container I built for myself for demo purposes, but um, you see the basic components here. Every Kubernetes component has a metadata attribute with a name that is required. This is how it is universally identified by kind and name. Um, and then most resource types have a spec. This defines the desired state of the resource. Um, and anything that's static, you know, as far as the pod definition is defined in here, as opposed to status, which uh, is updated by the various Kubernetes controllers. So here I've got um, a container. It also needs a name. I called it Fedora. This is the image. I'm running a local registry, but it's going to pull this image down. And then this is just the image pull policy because I update this container a lot. I always want the latest version. So this pod has been created and you can see here graphically that it is now running on, uh, well, I didn't mean to disconnect that, but uh, this node here. And here's the pod. So we can check to see if the pod is running. We can do git pod demo, uh, which is the name of the pod and see the status. We can do a cube control log. Now, understand I'm running this command on a system that is not, you know, the same system that's running Docker that's running the container. So you can do this remotely for any uh, container in the cluster. You don't have to SSH into the node that's running your thing to get the logs. You can get that straight from Kubernetes. And that's all there is for a pod. That's how you delete one. So the next uh, level up is a replica set. The thing with pods is um, they're the basic schedulable unit, but they don't have any notion of persistence. That is, if they die or they're killed or the node that they're on goes down, there is no, there's nothing in the framework to recreate them. That's what a replica set is. So we're going to create a replica set here. You can see that it, it looks somewhat like the uh, pod spec is from here. This is the same as our uh, pod definition before. Um, there's some new stuff here. Replicas is the number of pods you want running at any given time. It's the job of the replica set to make sure that this many replicas of this pod are running all the time. And the way it finds these pods in the cluster is it matches them on label. And here's the label selector that it's looking for here. It's looking for pods that have app equals demo label set on them. And so in the template, you know, the, your match label here and your label in your pod template need to match. So we started a replica set and you can see graphically here, we've got one replica running on each node. There's, uh, we desire two of them to be running and there are currently two running. And you can see the pods that the replica set has created. So the replica set can be, the rep, number of replicas can be changed dynamically. If we change it, scale it up to four, you can see two more pods have appeared here. We can also scale it back down and it will, again, basically what we're doing here is we're setting the desired to this number and then the replica set controllers in the Kubernetes cluster converge the cluster state on our desired state. If we just go out and delete one of the pods, this one, you can see another one appeared right in its place and there are still two running. So that's replica sets. The limitation of a replica set is that you can't change the pod template. Um, say you have a new version of your image that you want to roll out. Well, you can't go into the replica set and change the image inside the pod template. 
um, because that's that's not how the state of the replica set works. So there's even a higher level concept called a deployment. And this is the element that you'll most likely use. You won't use replica sets directly most likely. You'll use a deployment because deployments have a notion of application lifecycle. Uh, let me complete this one real quick. All right. Yeah. And one thing to note is when you delete a replica set, all the pods that it manages are also deleted. So if we create a deployment, you can see that this looks very similar to the um, replica set. In fact, it is exactly the same, except that it is of kind deployment instead of replica set. And deployments create replica sets, which create pods. So in this case, everything looks the same. Um, for the purposes of this demo, I'm gonna, I've created an environment variable inside the container called version, and the value of it right now is version one. And I'm going to demonstrate how you can change this pod spec on the fly and have the deployment create a new replica set and deploy new pods with the new version and also roll back. So we have a deployment here. This is similar to replica sets where you've got the current desired. Um, and this right here shows you if you were doing a rolling update, this would show you how many are at the current generation. So we can see the replica set that the deployment created, and we can see the pods that the replica set created. And we can log these two pods here and see that here we're running version one of the container. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to patch the pod spec. And this is a very long command line. You wouldn't normally do this unless you were scripting it like I am. You can use cube control edit or, or edit the specification file in place and then do an apply file. Uh, those are probably simpler ways to do it if you are sitting at the console. So what just happened there is I patched the deployment. And if you looked over here, you saw the old pods disappear and new pods appear. And if we take a look at the replica sets, you can see this is our old replica set that's been scaled down to zero. And this is the new one with the new image that's been scaled up to two. Now it keeps the old one around for a little while in case you need to roll back. So let's uh, take a look and confirm that our pods are version two, which they are. Um, but, oh no, V2 is horrible. We didn't want V2. How do we get back to V1? With one command, there's cube control rollout undo. And so the deployment has a notion of generations and versions, right? So you can roll back to a previous version of the deployment. And if we tail the logs on our containers now, we're back at V1. So these are the basic building blocks of Kubernetes as far as pods are concerned. Uh, subsequent videos will go into other resource types.